All right. Continuing this absolute value discussion, we're going to talk about inequalities rather than absolute value equalities. Equalities just means equal signs. For us, inequalities mean rather than equals, we'll be seeing less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. That's all we mean when we say inequalities. So, for example, in P4 on page 44, problem 44, coincidentally, they're asking us to solve the following inequality. For what values of x is the absolute value of x minus 4 less than 1? This is tricky. But recall, I believe from section uh, P1, you know, towards the very beginning when we just started talking about absolute values, we talked about them as a distance. That this quantity right here represents the distance between x and 4. So we're saying that the distance between x and 4 is less than 1. And by asking us, well, what values of x have a distance between itself and 4 being less than 1, that's just a convoluted of way that's just a convoluted way of asking what numbers are less than one away from four. So if we look at a number line here, We're interested in the numbers near 4, and they're near in the sense that they're no more than one unit away. Well, that means everything between 3 and 5. But the question becomes, do we include 3, or do we include 5? Well, let's see. 3 is exactly 1 away from 4. And exactly is not what we're going for. We're going for less than 1 away. So we're not going to include 3. And similarly, we're not going to include 5. So our answer is that x has to fall in this interval, in this shaded region here. This is one way to write your answer. Write it out as a number line. That's fine. You could also write it out as 3 less than x less than 5. Or, if you wish, you can write it out in interval notation. And if you remember, you put the left hand side, the left end point of the interval, comma, the right end of the interval. And if you include, you'll put square brackets around the interval you're, around the end point you're including. But in this case, we're excluding, we don't count 3, and x can't be 5, so we're not counting 5. So we put parentheses around both endpoints here. So, this is it. This is the answer to the question. The problem is, it doesn't seem like we did this rather algebraically. Um, I would argue that we did. We went through logically and solved the problem. And algebra is nothing but the logic of manipulating expressions with variables in them. But, if you're looking for a more traditional way of doing this, 
here's where you're going to start. The first step, just like with absolute value equalities, you want to isolate the absolute values, which in this example is already done. So here, absolute value of x minus 4 is all by itself on the left hand side. So that first part is done. This is where the trickiness comes in. If you have absolute value of blah being less than a number, which is what we have here, then split this up as follows. You're going to say that what's inside the absolute values, it could be less than this number, or, or excuse me, I got that backwards, and and what's inside the absolute value must be greater than minus this number. Remember when we were doing absolute value equations, we had what's inside equals the number, what's inside equals minus the number? Well, it's the same thing here, only there's a twist. The direction of our inequality flips. The other twist is that the conjunction you know, is important, as we'll see in just a second. So, at least in our case, let's follow through with what we have here. So, what's inside the absolute values, x minus 4 less than the number, in our case that number is 1, and what's inside the absolute values, x minus 4 is not less than, but now greater than minus 1. That's how ours is going to look, because ours, this example, is of this form. It's the absolute value of something less than a number. But what if our problem looked like this? Well, if your problem is the absolute value of something greater than a number, then your split is going to look, look a little bit different. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a slight twist. So what's inside is greater than the number, or what's inside is less than minus the number. So let's see what's changed. What's inside the direction of the inequality changed. The number is still there. This and became an or. In the second inequality, the left-hand side stays the same. The sign, or excuse me, the direction of the inequality changed. But minus that number is still there. Let's take a look at that in each of these contexts. Here, what we have is the, the equation but with the absolute value bars dropped. Same thing here. The first, the first inequality we write down is the original inequality, but with the absolute value bars dropped. The second inequality is a bit like the original inequality. It's just that what you've done is you flipped the direction of the inequality and changed the sign of the number. So instead of blah greater than a number, it's blah less than minus that number. Same thing here. We drop the bars, flip the sign of the inequality, 
and make the number negative. So to summarize, you know, your first inequality is going to be the same, but without the absolute value bars. Then we've got either an AND or an OR as a conjunction. And then same as the original, but without absolute value bars, the direction of the inequality flipped, or I'll just say the inequality flipped, and minus the number. You can kind of think of it as, you know, introducing a negative or multiplying a negative flips the sign of the inequality. By introducing this negative here, the direction of our inequality is flipped. So, if we were in this case, this would look like x minus 4 is greater than 1, or x minus 4 is less than minus 1. But that's all hypothetical. We're going to continue on and finish this problem up. So we're at this step here where we just split the inequality. Just like with solving absolute value equalities, with inequalities, once you've split, it's back to normal now. So to get x by itself, we'll add 4 to both sides in both equations. So this will be x is less than 5 and x is greater than, now 4 minus 1 is 3. Now it's only with and that we traditionally kind of compact this together. Because if you flip this around, you can say, well, flip, you know, move this to the other side and flip it around and then move x less than 5 over, but don't reverse it. And now you can say, oh, this is just 3 less than x less than 5, which is our answer. You can't really do that with OR. With OR, you kind of have to leave it as it is. But we'll see some, some of those examples in the, uh, the next video, the example video.